Hey guys, what's happening? So, I had an issue with one of my cameras. I went offline. Um, went out a couple days ago. And I'm going to troubleshoot it. So, if you're not familiar with these basic IP camera systems, they basically run on a SOC, an SOC chip. Uh, it's an embedded version of Linux. And uh, so the cameras themselves actually are running embedded Linux, and also this device is running embedded Linux. Um, but I've already tested the wire, but I'll, I'll do another test on it. But the wire I'm actually running is actually CCA. It's copper uh, clad aluminum. It's a cheaper wire. But the, the runs aren't very long. Um, so typically you don't really want to run that kind of wire for uh, PoE. You would want to do solid copper. Um, but I've already tested the wire, and the wire is fine. But the issue I'm having is my, my thing is just rebooting a lot. The camera, I mean, the camera is actually getting power. Um, but there's either something wrong with the firmware... Like either the firmware is rebooting, um, or it's not. Something's actually going on with the hardware, the network hardware, because I'm definitely getting power. Because at nighttime, I'll show you a clip after this. I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. But at nighttime, I can see the actual LEDs light, lit up, the uh, IR LEDs. So you can see that the actual camera is getting power, but it's just not fully booting up. Uh, but let me show you another computer. But so typically. With most devices, you'll see uh, once it fully boots up and loads the actual uh, network card drivers, you get the link light, but you'll notice I'm not getting a link light. Or it's very intermittent with this one here. It will come on and come off. Right, so let me just verify the wires. That way you can see it. So, working good. And right, so here is the camera in question. So I'm not going to roll out actually being the wire. Uh, I am a cabling contractor and I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff with wires. So, I mean, it could have been a mouse up there, hit the wire, you don't even know. Um, even though a test good means you might have too high of a resistance to provide, you know, constant power to the device. But this is an extremely low power device. Um, not like a big IP phone or something or access point. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take it apart. I actually have a PoE already on my desk already here, my test bench. And that's being provided by my so, uh, 48 port gigabit PoE switch up there. Just gonna do some basic checks for us. Make sure the contacts are clean. They look good. You probably can't see that there. Contacts look good in there. The RJ45 connector. Alright, let's plug this in. There's actually a light there. Oh, huh? see? See, it kind of powers on and comes off. It kind of reboots itself. See that? If you guys can see that or not. But this thing actually will come on every few seconds to come off. Well, it did for a second. It's very intermittent, like what it does, how it behaves. Like somebody will power on, and it seems like it's getting ready to power up the, the processor in Linux. There we go, see that? Shuts off. So that could be like a faulty cap, maybe? I'm not sure, inside the device here. Uh, that could be a corrupted bootloader. So what I mean really SOC, I, mean, I don't know if I can, sometimes in my video, I, 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 don't, I don't know how detailed you guys want this stuff. Um, but an SOC chip is like, sort of like a, an SOC chip is a, like a single, pro, it's one chip that actually has a processor, memory, it might have internal flash, network interfaces. I mean, they're all different, but uh, that's what these cameras run on, a version of Linux. So this is actually like a home user, like just about every single home user router out there runs a SOC version of Linux, embedded Linux. All right, um, all right, I gotta figure out what's up with this. So I can kind of verify that it's definitely not the cable here. So this thing should just come apart with three screws here in the back. So after you take the three screws out, I mean, you have a rubber seal here. And then this little glass lens fits on top like that. Alright, so let's take a look at this and see what this thing's made of here. So screws come out the back. Alright. Um, okay, I see the transform in there. So I'm going to have to get this thing apart to take a look at it here. And obviously that's your lens here. Um, What's funny is they all kind of look the same, all these IP cameras. I wonder if they just have like one PCB, you know, and then uh, they all just share firmware. So like you have like one person, one company making PCBs, 
that, like say a Hick Vision, they all run the same camera with this different version and different logo on it. And they all kind of look very, they all look very similar. The cameras. So this is the uh, non uh, wireless version. Uh, so you can't. I mean, I, I didn't really. I mean, PoE. I mean, if you're going to be running a network wire to provide power for the camera, there's no sense in using wireless. All right. Um, Okay, that's the power to the IR. That's probably the activation control. Hope you can see that in the frame. Yeah, so you have your probably your, your power here, then some kind of activation or some sort of like sensor. Possibly that right there. All right, how do I get this apart from here? Okay, just pull it straight forward out. On well, this camera, it actually has an external power source for 12 volt. I I'll show you something interesting. We'll get the power cable. Take a look at the AC adapter. If you can see in the frame, you can check out the power light right there. So right now, it's not even plugged into the wall right now, but it's actually getting power from the 12 volt, the PoE. It's not even plugged in right now. <clears throat> See? If I have it hooked up again, just direct it to the DVR here. And look at power is not plugged in. The power is being pulled from the PoE. And camera's back on. So I wonder if that's like a grounding issue. I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm going to have to take it apart and figure it out, but that is weird, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's switching between IR and cutoff, but... All right, so at uh, least now I know it. I mean, the system on chip or SOC chip, uh, the flash is correctly. It's booting Linux correctly. Um, there's also a way I can solder on a... It's not like called a JTAG, but I can solder on some pins of the board and... I could actually hook up a TTL USB TTL adapter and watch it boot up. It's basically like hooking up a console to it. Um, so I know it's 100% power related now because, like I said, it's fully booted up in the Linux. I watch it. So right now, powered on. Let me unplug the unplugged AC adapter. Watch. As soon as I do that, it kills it. I know this video is going to be a little bit long, but I'm a little OCD about this stuff. Um, see this little thing right here? I know it says pushed over and it has a thermal pad on it right here. Well, I'm assuming that is to control or take away heat of the SOC chip, the processor. And it's not even f evenly, f it's not even s sat, or it's not even uh, mounted correctly. It's pushed over. So it's not even sitting flush with the, with the chip in there. I can see that. I'm going to take it apart. But, I mean, I need to bend this back. I mean, that's how it came from the factory, you know? So really, it's not, it's not it's not providing any sort of cooling. So what this is a heat sink right here. It's designed to t draw heat away from the processor and back into here and kind of like distribute the heat amongst the, the case here. That's why you have a thermal pad here and a thermal pad here. So um, yeah, I gotta take that apart and fix it. So I gotta take this a couple screws off the top here. Looking for any water damage or maybe, but I mean, was this thing just overheating the whole time? But it booted fine when I had the uh, the thing plugged in. So all right, that's yeah, gonna require an extremely small wrench. This is four milliliter. Gotta unscrew that off. All right, so that is the SOC chip right there, and the oily material is actually when the silicone rubber breaks down from the thermal pad right here. Uh, I know a lot about this because I, uh, I mean, you see my crypto mining videos. <laughs> At least this part, like the thermal pads and stuff, breaking down. Um, okay. Uh, I got a, the power board. The PoE power board is uh, underneath here. So that's pretty interesting. They actually have one of those, uh, you know, moisture packs. I'm actually glad they put it there versus not put it in there. Um, Alright, so I'm going to look on this PoE board and see if I see anything obvious. 
So obviously the network and the PO would come here first. You can see that from the wire here. So I got to figure out where it's drawing power and, and look, look at the board. Look at the solder connections and look for any back components. I definitely noticed that this cap seems a little bit slightly bulge on the top. And I can feel it kind of coming out, so maybe it's a bad cap. I'm going to get my ESR meter out here. Is either in circuit or leaky. I'm going to remove it just to test it just to be sure. Yeah, because it's just super odd that like when I hook up uh, the AC adapter, because it should be 470 ohms. Yeah, I'm going to go all the way place reading. Um, so I'm gonna actually I'm going to remove it just to, to be sure. All right, so here's the cap. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this looks actually good because look, <laughs> I don't know if it blew out the bottom. I mean, actually, it literally looks like it blew out the bottom because actually that's the the, the winding material. It's basically but it's like a wrap paper um, with an electrolytic solution in there. But yeah, I don't think that looks right. <laughs> I've never seen a cap that looked like that before. I'll tell you that for sure. So let's hook it up anyway, just to make sure. So this should be 470 ohm on the ESR meter. And by the way, it's actually my I designed, it's actually one of the first things I ever designed in 3D printing was this uh, meter stand here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, not time showing up as a component. Yes, yeah, so I'm not even getting it reading here. Yeah, it's something I, I noticed. Like, why is that rubber thing there? Is it like, like a protector pad or something? But yeah, I just think that when I instead of actually bur blowing out this way, you know, it pushed the whole cap up and pu pulled the rubber thing out here, the rubber seal. So I got to find a 470 ohm cap, 25 volt. All right, so on my way to pick up another capacitor. 470 microfarad, 25 volts. I was thinking, it's like, how is this thing working without the capacitor? And I, I was thinking that if you're not, if you're familiar or not familiar with electronics, um, an inductor is almost exactly like a capacitor. It's a storage, a, a unit, a way to store energy. Um, whereas a transformer is basically two inductors. So what I was thinking is maybe by, the, by having this thing back feeding into the circuit, it was acting like a capacitor, storing the actual energy, basically acting and replacing this capacitor. You know, so that was my thought because maybe the capacitor was well, the inductor was working in place of the capacitor. I don't know if that makes sense or not? But this thing was acting as a capacitor. Um, all right, so we get that soldered on there and fire it up and see if it works. Um, I've also got some standoffs too. I'll make another video about that. I've made another one on OpenWRT Linux and uh, wherever the board is at, camera board, there's a, a UART. So I want to actually mess around with the firmware. Yeah, I don't like the firmware that's on it. It's basically they dummy down the firmware. Um, but I should be able to solder hopefully a UART on there to program that chip. Change the software, change the version of Linux on there. Let me show you a working capacitor so it's supposed to look like or how it's supposed to work on this meter. See? It's 470, it shows up at 469. So that is correct. Put a link down below if you want an ESR meter. Um, and then this is actually on my Thingiverse page, the stand. Alright, so cap looks good. Slot it in there. Alright, got the cap back in. Let's fire this up, Let's see what happens. Alright, so I'm going to try this out the IR bar because I know this thing definitely has a bad diode on there. And that probably was caused by me, uh, like when I was experimenting with the power. Like I think I somehow sent voltage back the wrong way and the diode, it, it, it hit the diode. Um, so, let's try this. I don't know what's going to happen. Hope I don't hear any pops. All right. All right, still nothing. 
Oh, oh, there it goes, there it goes. All right, oh. Look at that. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. All right, that was the issue. Well, let's go back. I'm gonna, before I put the whole thing back together, I'm going to take it over to my camera system. We'll plug it in. And then now I'll, then I'll troubleshoot the, uh, the IR board here. Or I'm going to have to replace the diode on it. All right. All right, camera's looking good. And as you can see, you can see me kind of moving around there. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, if you didn't actually mess up your IR board, uh, I mean, that'd be the end of this video. But if you want to continue watching, I gotta fix the IR board now, the diode on the IR board. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's if your camera's not firing up and it's doing what mine's doing, it's rebooting itself, firing up and booting up, uh, check the capacitors on the board. So. Alright, if you wanna continue watching, uh, I'm gonna try to fix the rest of the uh, camera here.